What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I'm going to show you a technique exercise that will definitely make you a better musician. Practicing technique should be a super important part of your practice routine. It's what gets your fingers moving faster and smoother and makes you a better all around musician. Now we all have our favorite technique books and series that we practice from. I have one in the Scott Paddock Sax School called The Chop Shop that is super effective at getting your fingers moving faster and cleaner. However, today I'm gonna tell you about something that I think everyone should be practicing no matter what level saxophone player they are, which will make them a whole lot better musician. Before I tell you this technique exercise, drop me a comment below telling me what your favorite technique book or series is to work on, the one that you find the most effective. So what is this technique exercise that you should be working on? It's actually pretty simple. It's writing out your own patterns or licks. Writing out your own. Now you should definitely still be practicing from different technique exercises, different technique books, but when you write out your own pattern or your own lick, it makes you think about music in a different way and it's gonna really help your playing, it's gonna help your ear, it's gonna help you understand music better, it's gonna help you be able to recognize patterns and licks a lot easier. There's just so many benefits from coming up with your own pattern or lick. Now, you can do this at any level, whether you're early, intermediate, or super advanced. And now, this doesn't have to be a super big part of your practice session, but maybe once a month, come up with your own pattern or your own lick that you work on and you play through several different keys. The easiest place to start with this process is using a major scale to come up with a pattern. So when we use the major scale, I'm just gonna use the G major scale. You wanna think of the notes as numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, whatever you wanna call that top uh, note. So if you think about them in numbers, it's way easier to come up with a pattern that is repeatable. So that's what the pattern is. It's a series of notes, a set of notes that you can repeat. Now to start off, you either wanna have four notes or eight notes in your pattern. So for example, my first pattern that I might come up with would be one, two, three, one. So in the G scale, that'd be G, A, B, G. Then I can take that same pattern and start it on the second degree of the scale. So it'd be two, three, four, two, or A, B, C, A. Once I figured out what my pattern is, I repeat that pattern on every note in the scale. An example of an eight note pattern would be playing one, three, five, seven, six, five, four, three. Then the pattern repeats starting on the two. Then it repeats starting on the three. So if you put it all together, you come up with a pattern and you repeat it on each note in the scale. Now, the reason you wanna start off using four note and eight note patterns is because the math works out really well. That either gives you a half note if you're using eighth notes or a whole note if you're using eighth notes. So it's gonna fit in the measure really well. When coming up with your pattern, your options are wide open. You can come up with any order of the notes that you want and any scale that you want. If you're just starting off with this concept, I would suggest starting off with your major scale, but you can come up with any order that you want in the scale as long as it is repeatable. Now, obviously there are gonna be some notes or some orders that you come up with that are gonna sound a lot more musical than others, but when you're starting off, just do some trial and error and see what sounds good to you. And the beauty of working on your own pattern is it's gonna make you understand, hear, and be able to play your scales a whole lot better. So start off coming up with a four note pattern, see how that works out. When that feels really good, come up with an eight note pattern. Once you've got those down, then you wanna do it on each note in your scale. And then when you're really comfortable in that scale, say you're doing it on the, in the G scale, then transpose it into another scale, uh, the D scale, then the A scale, then the E scale, so on and so forth, until you can play your pattern through a whole bunch of different keys. Here's part of that first pattern I played in the key of G. Same pattern in the key of D. 
Same pattern in the key of A. So on and so forth. Now I only played part of the pattern just for the sake of not having a super long video, but that should give you an idea of how to work on the pattern and how to learn it in different keys. You can take this exact same concept and apply it to coming up with your own lick. So a lick is more of a musical thought. When you're thinking about patterns, you're thinking about something that's repeatable, normally on each scale degree. When you're thinking about a lick, it's just more of a musical, a musical idea, something that sounds like this. So that obviously was a famous Charlie Parker lick, but when I'm talking about come up with your own licks, I don't mean steal a lick from someone else, I mean come up with your own from scratch. Now normally you're gonna either do that in a key signature or over a set of chord changes. For example, the intro that I played for this video was a solo that I wrote over the A section for the jazz standard on Green Dolphin Street. That's one of the things that I really like to work on for technique now, which is writing a solo over a section of a jazz standard, and then I do it in several different keys. So I take that solo, and then I transpose it into another key, transpose it into another key, so on and so forth. When I do that, it forces me to think about exactly what I'm gonna play instead of just improvising over everything, which is really cool, but when it comes to writing out a pattern or a lick, or in my case, a solo, it just forces you to really think about the way everything is going together, which really helps you become a better musician because you have time to analyze what you're doing and figure out why you're doing it. So in addition to working out of technique books and technique series, I also highly recommend coming up with your own patterns and your own licks. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School, where I will show you a step-by-step -step process on how to become a better saxophone player. Uh -huh.